Hello there, this is Coach Ikram, and welcome to this video on thermochemical equations. A thermochemical equation is actually going to look uh, quite similar to chemical equations that you've seen in the past, except that this one's going to include energy as either a product or reactant. You have to balance your thermochemical uh, equations, and you must include your phases for each substance when you write a full thermochemical equation. So going ahead and looking just at a thermochemical, thermochemical equation, we have four moles of iron reacting with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of iron three oxide. And then we're producing 1625, so 1625 kilojoules of energy. Note that this energy is a product. When your energy is a product, it's going to be um, released. And when your energy is a reactant, it's going to be absorbed. Another thing to note is that this amount of energy, the 1625, is directly dependent on the number of moles in your chemical equation. So for four moles of iron, you get 1625. Three moles of O2, 1625. So does this reaction release or absorb heat? Because the 1625 is a product, it is going to release heat. How much? 1625 kilojoules. The kg, or kj, sorry, does mean kilojoules. It is a measurement of heat. So if it is releasing heat, then this particular thermochemical equation is going to be exothermic. It says, what would change in HB if you started with two moles of Fe? So I'm just going to go ahead and do this with uh, dimensional analysis just to show you the whole process. But if you can do it without it, you're welcome to. So if I've got two moles of Fe, according to my thermochemical equation, um, for every four moles of Fe, I have 1625 kilojoules. And uh, when I multiply across and divide, I get 812.5 kilojoules. So my change in H for this, uh, my overall enthalpy of my reaction is going to be 812.5 kilojoules, and that is going to be negative. Note that when I take that um, value out of the equation, it has to show whether it's positive or negative because that tells me if that change in enthalpy is um, it's exothermic or endothermic or if heat's being released or absorbed. And in this case, it is being released. So when I take that number out, it's a negative 812.5. So graph that reaction in terms of potential energy. If this is an exothermic reaction, it's going to look a little something like this. So over here, we've got my reactants, which is my iron and my oxygen. Over here, we have my product, which is my iron the oxide. And the difference between these two potential energies should be 1625 kilojoules. That's lost because it's exothermic. Looking at another thermochemical equation, in this case, we've got our kilojoules right here, 89.3 kilojoules, as a reactant in my problem. So if heat is being released or absorbed in this thermochemical equation, we can say now that it is being absorbed because the 89.3 kilojoules is a reactant. How much? 89.3 kilojoules. So this is going to be an endothermic thermochemical equation. And the last question on this one says, what is the change in H or the enthalpy of the reverse reaction? So if I'm going to write the reverse reaction, I'm actually going to, I'm going to write it out in reverse. If I had 2Cs2 going to carbon plus my sulfur plus 89.3 kilojoules. So in this case now, if I look at my reverse reaction, my 89.3 kilojoules is actually now a product. And as we said in the previous slide, if you've got 89.3 kilojoules as a product, it's going to be exothermic. So my change in H is going to be negative 89.3 kilojoules. Note that I made it negative when I took it out of the equation. It's not negative in the equation. It's positive because it's a reactant. But when you, when you take it out and you, you, know, you put it by itself, you have to specify. So if I'm graphing this one, if this one is endothermic, I'm going to start down here and do something like that. So we've got our carbon and our two sulfurs, and we've got our two CS2 up here. And the difference between these two should be 89.3 kilojoules. 
So when we're doing thermochemical equations, we can actually go back to stoichiometry and use that to predict the energy outcomes of the reaction if we know the enthalpy or the change in H. These values are going to depend on the number of moles of the reactants and the products involved. So for example, down here, we've got a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio with a 65.2 kilojoules as my energy released, my product, one of my products. If I make that a 2 to 2 to 2 and multiply everything by 2, note that my kilojoules doubles as well. So it goes from 65.2 to 130.4 kilojoules because that, that value of energy um, gained or lost is going to be dependent on the number of moles. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this stoichiometry problem with our thermochemical equation. If you note here at the top, my enthalpy or my change in heat is actually taken out of my equation and listed on the right. Note that it is negative, so overall this is an exothermic reaction. It is losing energy. Let's calculate the heat change in kilojoules for this conversion of 10.1 uh, grams of the hydrogen gas to hydrofluoric acid gas at a constant pressure. So if I've got 10.1 grams of hydrogen gas, I'm going to convert that to moles, so 2.016 grams of hydrogen is one mole of hydrogen. And then for every one mole of hydrogen, I've got negative 536 kilojoules. So for every one mole of hydrogen, I've got negative 536 kilojoules of energy lost. And when I go ahead and work that out, I get 2685.31, that's negative. And if I uh, solve using significant figures, I can have three significant digits, so that's going to be negative 2690 kilojoules of energy lost. And don't forget the negative there at the end. In the second example, um, it says, what mass of the iron 3 oxide was combusted in the thermite reaction if uh, 2,577 kilojoules of energy is released? So if I've got that's my energy, I'm going to use that as my starting point. Well, I've got my energy right up here. So I've got um, negative 851 kilojoules, and this should also actually be negative because it was released. So negative 851 kilojoules um, for every uh, one mole of my iron three oxide in this case. Make sure you know that up there at the top in my balanced chemical equation. And then for every one mole, I have 159.687 grams. I'm going to solve it out, and I got 483.565. When I round that to significant digits, I get 484 grams. And the important thing to note there is that my signs were consistent. If 2,577 is released, that's a negative, and then I put a negative down here at the bottom. All right, now that's the end of this video. Make sure you took good notes and come to class with questions. Thanks.